Hello, come on in, warm your feet by the fire. <laughs> Feels so good on the bunions. <laughs> I named this one little Jimmy. Sorry, everybody, that's my Romanian uncle Vlad. Some people find him a little creepy, but what are you gonna do? We've got some text here that's as cold as November rain, but it is still editable. So this is a really handy um, effect. It takes a little bit longer than um, the average to create this, but it's well worth it. So I would definitely stick around and watch till the end. So go to file new and 1920 by 1080, 72 DPI works for me. And I will grab my text tool, the artistic text tool, double click this arrow so I can get my drop down, go to something that I can see. And um, let's type in cold. I'll click my arrow so I can easily change the font. And uh, so now I've downloaded a free font from defont.com and it's called Wicked Mouse. So let's use that and I'll click this corner and drag. And it's so nice to be able to drag without holding shift to constrain. So uh, the next step is to create a background. So I click this little add layer button, drag my layer below the current text, and I will marquee drag out a rectangle that's the size of the screen or bigger. Uh, doesn't really matter as long as it's fitting the entire artboard. And uh, let's give it a color by clicking on our fill tool which we can click and drag to create a gradient. And now if we go to appearance, we can select the fill and then click again on this circle. So we could edit the gradient, click this stop, click its color, make it a cold, cold, cold blue. And uh, I think that'll work. And just make it radial. And let's give the center a little bit more space by dragging that, that midpoint over and uh, yeah, so I think that'll work. Let's go back to our arrow tool. I don't wanna have to worry about this anymore. So I could expand this layer and hit this lock uh, to, I could lock the rectangle. I could lock the entire layer. I could do both if I'm really um, uh, obsessive compulsive like I am. So I'll just go with that. Now I don't have to worry about grabbing the background. Okay. So now we can start to make a symbol and I need to go to the view menu in studio to show my symbols window. And now let's take a look here. We've got our layer selected, our text selected. If not, just make sure you click on it and hit this create button and we've got a symbol. And now I can alt drag. And if you wanna test things out, just press T on your keyboard, double click on the, the text. And you can see when I change one, the other changes because they are synced. And um, the the next thing I wanna do is a, a little bit tricky. I mean, it's not tricky, you just have to follow these steps to get it to work correctly. So I wanna use one layer to cut out another layer. And to get that to work correctly, I have to select one of these symbols and shift click the other symbol and then control G or right click and find this group here and now that they're grouped, if I select this layer on top and I go from pass through and set that to erase, you can see it's gonna set them both to erase. So I need to unsync my layers. And now when I do it, fingers crossed, it actually works. So with this blend mode set to erase, it's basically um, creating a mask from this, this symbol here and we could put it wherever we want. I want it to be um, somewhere around here. If I see like this part of the C intersecting the other letter a little bit much, it might look weird later on, but I'm gonna blur this layer out anyway, so it's not a big deal. Um, and I can see a little bit of the O is cutting into the black part of the L, but it's, it's so small, it's not gonna make much of a difference. And uh, let's even go further just to see how it's gonna look with those effects blurred out. All right, so now what I wanna do is turn, I'm gonna turn sync back on just, just to double check to see everything is still working. Okay, good. And uh, what I could do is start to add effects to these 
layer. So I'm going to turn off sync and I'm going to go and um, click and drag this effects tab out over here and then we'll expand it because I want to be able to see my layers and my effects at the same time. All right, so this one, this is the one we're using to cut out. I'm going to set this to, and also remember, turn sync off because we want to change these independently. I'm going to set my Gaussian blur effect and turn this up a little bit here. And now we're kind of blurring that inside and that's kind of negating a little bit of that weirdness. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one. So I'm going to add maybe a little bit less, but I'm going to add a little blur to this layer here just to soften this up a bit. And uh, yeah, so that, and then if I move these, you can kind of see uh, we're even already, we're starting to get a little bit of a, a 3D effect. And so this, this bottom one also, I want to give it a color, like a light blue, or actually a kind of a saturated blue, just so we could see it on the background. And I don't want to do too much because it's going to be hard to see the results until we have an underlying layer. And uh, so I'll, I'll collapse this for now. I'll double click to name it. This will be our special highlight layer. And now I'll drag my symbol out here again. I'll kind of line it up. And what I want is this to be below my highlight group. And it's a little tricky because if I just click and drag here, it looks like it's gonna go, go below, but you actually have to go, there's a, there's this gray line. When I click and drag, this blue highlight shows up, but I have to actually go below that gray line. And now this layer is below my highlight group. So that's working. And I could actually just hide this for now because I want to focus in on this base symbol. And if we want, we can double click and name it base. And what I want to do now is kind of create a uh, 3D look. And the first thing is we select this layer, make sure sync is still off, which is good. And this time I want to add a gradient overlay and I want to get to its settings. So I click the setting tab. And now I want to move this to a place where it's out of the way. And then if I hold down spacebar, left click, I could pan uh, my artboard and now maybe this is in the way, so I'll move this down to the bottom. Okay, so now my gradient overlay settings, I'm gonna hold down control and drag this blue little line up and holding down control gives us constrained movement. And I click on this gradient image here and uh, let's make this first one a um, uh, kind of a purplish color. I'll make this one over here a light blue color, even lighter. And uh, and then what I'll do is add, I'll add another one here. So I'm going to select this one and hit copy. And I have a copy of this one. I'm going to select this one and hit copy. And actually, it doesn't do anything. So I'm not sure why, but... Uh, I'm gonna just click here to make another one. And uh, these two, I'm gonna use as like, um, this is gonna be like an extra highlight here. So I'll click that and drag. And now we got a really bright white. And I'll leave that so we get kind of like a lighting effect at the top. And maybe I'll move this one over and I'll add a sort of lighting effect at the bottom by clicking this one here, making this a little bit lighter maybe even going more in this direction here towards purple. And yeah, so you, you just adjust these to, um, to suit your needs. And um, I think I'm happy with that. That's kind of like a reflected light at the bottom and a highlight at the top. And um, yeah, so that is good for our basic uh, gradient color. Now, I would go into the outline, turn this on, and make its radius bigger. And maybe we need to pan down a little bit here. So uh, for this one, 
it looks kind of nice just with these colors as it is and simple, but let's make it a little bit more complicated and um, three-dimensional. So actually, I, I want to keep this as outside. I want to change the fill style to contour. And now I want to edit this gradient. So I click on it and uh, basically do, do a, a similar thing where uh, we get a nice color there. And um, I, might, I might just leave that as is, but I think actually I'm going to select this one, hit copy to get a, a second version. And I'll try it and see if um, I'm going to use the, uh, the uh, eyedropper. So I'm going to click on the eyedropper and jack, drag it to the color I want. And then I get a little purple swatch that I just have to click on. So we get a little bit of that rim lighting effect. I might might want to exaggerate that a little bit more so we could see it. All right, and I want this to be subtle, but it's there and I think it works. So uh, we could add a uh, bevel and emboss and uh, let's increase the radius. And I think I'm gonna go try maybe inner. And you can see, okay, it's, it's, it's starting to add a little bit more three-dimensionality and uh, maybe I'll pump this up a bit. I'm gonna pick the, um, the colors. So let's set this to a uh, light blue color and maybe adjust the opacity to uh, suit our needs. And uh, same thing for the, multi the shadow is set to multiply. And we could see as we make adjustments, uh, the, the results that we're getting, you could even try different blend modes and things like that and uh, adjust the, um, the light angle. And if it's looking a little too sharp, you could soften it, but actually I kind of, I kind of like the look as it is here. And then uh, I could do like a inner, inner glow uh, and uh, let's try inner glow increase the radius and I kind of like that as it is we could try changing a different color but uh, I think that's that was pretty good all right just do a double check to make sure you're making good progress and not making it look worse so we got inner glow we could do inner shadow outer glow probably don't need to worry about the outer stuff and uh yeah so th this is kind of building the effect up nicely and uh, just to to take it to another level we can start to uh, make adjustments to our highlight layer so uh, let's go in and uh, let's start to add effects on here. So I'm going to go to um, 3D and I'm going to increase my radius. So this is starting to give us a, a unique look that we can't get with just the styles because we have clipped out a lot of it. And um, let's add, adjust this, something like that. And um, so now you can kind of see that the, the thing I was talking about with the the letters are overlapping and it's kind of giving us uh, this little bit of distortion, but in a way it, it kind of looks good. I kind of like it. And we could also um, move this around to a spot where we like it. And um, so, yeah, I would just, you know, continue to go in here. I could turn on the soften, but I think it looks good without it. Uh, we could look at the uh, specular and, and the shininess. Uh, I don't know, some, something like that. And um, I think the specular color is good. If we want to tone it down, we can go from white to like a, a light blue or even check out some of the other colors. No, we don't want to do that for sure. Let's keep it as a, a really light blue. And um, all these other this one is just kind of an overall brightness and, and similar with the, the diffuse here if you want to make adjustments to that. And uh, yeah, so, and if it's too sharp, we could add a, 
a Gaussian blur to this and bring it up and then as we add that blur we're starting to um, negate some of that weirdness and I might I might place it a little differently uh, and then remember we have access to the uh, the original symbols and their effects so I could increase the um, the Gaussian blur on this one it's really hard to see what's happening so I'm gonna go to this top group level turn it off here and then go to this first one and see how how does adjusting that affect it and you can see as I bring this further it's starting to look a little bit nicer and this symbol also has the blur on it so we could we can see how that's affecting things this, this blurs this outside edge and we could use more or less we don't want to blur too far or else it'll just destroy the whole effect but that is pretty much it I could add a bunch more effects to um, the uh, this shape this shape and the overall group and uh, I could go on for hours and hours messing with those but uh, this is the basic way to create the effect let's turn our sync back on and select our text and you could see we have a really cool editable text that goes beyond just the normal um, styling and, and layer effects